in the mail, MSX came from Japan. Collecting without fail, those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey, YouTube, Electric Adventures here with another package in the mail. And the MSX shirt on once again. Uh, this one's from the UK. Uh, good friend Matt in the UK who uh, puts aside various titles for me, gathers them up into boxes and sends them across. Um, I have not much idea of what's in here because these are from quite some time ago. <coughs> Basically, almost as far back as Christmas. Um, titles that we put together. Now I, I got one box probably about probably about two to three months ago now and this is the last of the lot that he had aside for me. So it'll be just as much a surprise to me as to you guys of what's in here. Ooh, pardon me. A bit of packing. Done a very good job of making sure because a lot of the software there are a couple of cartridge titles in here as I can see by the, the top of the box that I'm just um, getting to um, but most of them are tape titles so what I'll do is I'll put it down here and we'll have a look so the first one is one by electric software not electric adventures electric software um, and it's MSX Artist. So I assume this is going to be um, some sort of art software. So, so the majority of these titles will be tape based titles and um, not all tape based titles are lazy um, spectrum conversions. This one will be one written specifically for the system. I don't think I've ever played with it but um, there we go, MSX Artist. Next we have um, now I know this is a Spectrum conversion, but I, you know, the original game on the Spectrum is a really good game, and it's none other than Stormbringer. So it's part of the Magic Knight series, I believe. Um, I think it's Magic Knight, isn't it? So the MSX version should look pretty much identical to the Spectrum version. And the, the conversion of the rest of the games in the series were actually quite well done. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to, um, you know, use any extra capabilities of the MSX to make it a good game. So looking forward to playing that one. So these are really going to be odds and assortments. Uh, next one is obviously a football one, Champions by Peaksoft. Could be a football manager type of game. It's sea load, so it could be in basic or not. Yeah, football division of the football league. Uh, the case is a little bit challenged. Yeah, it's missing one side, but cassette cases I have plenty of. And we'll see how we go. So that loading that one. Obviously, we're going to do gameplays on all of these. Okay, so a larger box title, missing the back part of the box, but that's alright. It's Terramex, the cartoon adventure. Looks like a spectrum conversion from the back. And there's our tape. <coughs> I'll have to find a spare. A large, it's missing its whole back part of its case. Front part of it still works though. Okay, I actually have this one already, I believe. Its case is a little bit challenged. This is five star games, but it has some really good games on it. Elidon, Manic Miner, Barnstormer, Shark Hunter, and Zoids. Oh, maybe I don't. Maybe I've got another five star game collection. Just the uh, the cover looked familiar, but now I'm reading the games list on the back. It does, they do, don't look familiar. So there's actually some quite good games on there. Once again, the case is a little challenge, but 
we can work with that. Two tapes in there. This is supposed to be quite a good, cool game. I've never played it before, but Zoids. This is in one of these nice um, hard plastic covers as well. Another tape title. I, I believe that is supposed to be quite a good game. Now this is a game I used to have back in the day and I do not know what happened to my copy. And I do quite like James Bond games. I can be, remember being a little disappointed with this game um, at the time, but we'll wait and see. But it's James Bond A View to a Kill. And that looks in pretty good condition. And I do not know what happened to my original game. Or maybe I just have a memory of us getting in the shop that I worked and I played it at the shop and I never actually had a copy myself. Or maybe I had a copy, if you know what I mean. Not a not a real one. Um, and while we're on the theme of James Bond, there's another James Bond in here. I haven't played this one on the MSX. It's The Living Daylights. Interesting to see, yes. Never seen, never played that one on the MSX at all, so looking forward to that, and I like James Bond games. Another large format one, and I do remember the uh, the book and everything like this, and this is a level nine game. Uh, Sue Townsend, The Growing Pains of Adrian Mole. So it could just be a plain text adventure, or it could be a graphic <coughs> graphical adventure as well. We'll have to wait and see. No screenshots. Looks in very good condition. So there really is a lot of different titles in here. Alright, I think we're down to down to cartridges now. We'll go with this one next. It's in a larger box, once again. It's Afterburner. There's actually nothing that says that it's MSX on here. So let's go inside the box. We have a, a mission briefing. Then we have a Concord competition. It's a long, Concord's been gone a long time. And it does indeed say for the MSX. It's dual sided as well, so we've got two goes to see if we can get it working. Um, I, before I, I play these, I, I tension the tapes and, um, and make sure I clean my cassette recorder for the first time that I try them. But, um, I'll be most interested, so no screenshots or anything like that to um, to give us any hint of what it's going to be like. That's There is a fair bit of instructions and everything in there, but um, once again, another one that I haven't seen the MSX version at all. There is some screenshots on the back, but they look very much like from the Amiga and the Atari ST, so we won't go on on those ones. Alright, now I do believe we are down to cartridges now. Um, this one I may or may not have the loose cartridge for, but it, it's another one in the Panasonic um, ASCIC titles, of which I have just about every single one. I'm, it's very hard to get definitive lists and know how far they are through. It's, a, it's not a super flash title, it's, it's Golf, um, and I know it's not a particularly fancy version of golf. There's lots of golf games on the MSX and some of them are better than the others. This one looks very very basic. In fact it's probably written in basic looking by those graphics. Um, but it is indeed a cartridge. The cartridge looks in good condition. And we have our instruction sheet as well. So that one's in pretty decent condition and I actually quite like these Panasonic box ASCII titles because they look quite nice and there are versions of these from Japan and also Europe so obviously this is a European one and my collection is a mixture of those two that didn't shut properly there we go alrighty yeah we have 
Yes, I don't believe this is like uh, I don't have this. This is a Konami game, um, and I don't think I have this one in this box. I've got it, or do I just have it loose? So I'm looking over at my shelf. Unfortunately, I'm still, I'm sure I'm probably got this loose. So this is Hypersports One, which is really cool because recently I got that um, Hypershot controller so we'll be able to try it out with a hypershot controller it's actually quite a good one the first one we have uh, springboard diving the vault trampoline and the high bar so lots of ones where you've got to do uh, bursts of activity and press the other button and then we'll work bursts of activity so hypersports ones is quite and that's not a bad condition konami title we also have a pretty good manual And the cartridges. Looking at that, I think this is one of my remaining loose um, Konami titles. I think of all ones that I'm missing that I don't have a box for, but I've got loose, it's actually an um, Antarctic adventure. Very hard to find a box for that one, but um, really, really cool and a great game to boot, as long as you don't mind stressing joysticks. And we have a loose cartridge wrapped up in some bubble wrap and the title is a how game all in Japanese so I'm not going to be able to tell you which title it is at the moment but it's actually in very good condition so I'm gonna to have to put some titles up there and obviously we'll wait for the gameplay before we know exactly what's going on And one last one. Uh, so this is the European box version of this title. The Japanese uh, version is a larger. Sorry for the cut there. My camera was playing up. Um, so this is the European box version of this game, but it also means it'll be in English, and it's an adventure game, so it's very important. It's USAS. A very. Uh, it's an MSX2 game. Very colourful. I have not actually ever played this. And other than the flaps coming undone a little bit, this box is not in too bad condition. We can tidy that up. No manual, but we have the cartridge. Cartridge is not too bad. So I'm actually quite interested in playing this one because I've never even played it under emulation or anything. Uh, and I've been holding off until I got a, a real copy before I played it. So some really good titles in this lot. Um, so, without further ado, we'll um, plug them into the MSX and give them all a go. <clears throat> right, so here we go with The Growing Pains of Adrian Mole. Um, it's quite a large tape. Uh, there are four parts on the tape. Um, and the tape was, uh, you know, <coughs> um, hadn't been wound back and forth for a while, so it was a little tight. So what I do is I uh, loosen the tape and rewind it manually using a pen through the holes um, and then I full forward and rewind the tape several times um, and have a bit of a, a break in between um, and now it loads. Uh, you, could hear, you could hear it, it was um, a different pitch when it, I first started to try it. Now this is an adventure game I am probably not going to do very well, but here we go. Welcome to the Growing Pains of Adrian Mole from Level 9 and Virgin Games. If you are loading from tape and it is still running, stop the tape immediately. Well, this is an MSX. It's, it, it has stopped the tape as well. Friday, January 1st, Bank of Ireland, USA, Canada. These are my New Year's resolutions. One, I will be true to Pandora. Two, I will bring my bike in at night. Three, I will not read unworthy books. Four, I will study hard for my own levels and get grade A's. Five, I will try to be more kind to the dog. Six, I will try to find it in my heart to forgive Barry. Uh, or Barry Kent, his multiple sins. <laughs> been, I have actually read the book when I was younger, but it's been a long time. Seven, I will clean the bath after use. Eight, I will stop worrying about the size of my thing. I will do my back stretching exercises every night without fail. Ten, I will learn a new word and use it every day. Saturday, January 2nd. And sorry, we're getting a little bit of a, a bounce. There must be getting a little bit of power interference on the um, capture. Uh, Saturday, January 2nd, bank holiday in Scotland. A day may be given in lieu. How interesting it is that ABEC should be an Australian bark used for making sweat. Okay. 
but it's still going. Sunday, January 3rd, 2nd after Christmas, Moon's first quarter. I wouldn't mind going to Africa and hunting an aardvark. So we're going through the diary. All right, we'll look. I won't, I'm not going to read all this out. Choose one of the following. Rush out to buy them a present. Think it is a waste of time. Say to mother that I think it's disgusting. Let's go three. Say to mother that I think it's disgusting to get married at that age. She looks a bit moony and says that you are never too old for love. Uh, I, Adrian Mole, score 39%, which makes me an average thicko. <laughs> Friday the 15th, I've arranged to go shopping with Pandora for a Burton Queen's present. Uh, I'll, I'll buy that. There we go. So, anyway, it's an adventure game. You need to work your way through. I think reading the book is helpful. Um, but as you can see, it's got text and graphics, and um, it's you know these these games require time and um i probably wouldn't mind um playing this and things but i'd probably have to find a copy of the book and read it all right let's try our next title right here we go with stormbringer i had to get out the old spec video seven to eight to load this one it didn't like my phillips nms msx2 or my um uh, pioneer msx1 which normally loads everything so Obviously, they used were particularly naughty with the memory banks. Uh, let's have a look. Mm. Doesn't quite joystick. Right after returning from the Starship uses Pisces in the 25th century, Magic Knight finds that the otherwise quiet village of Cornhamp on the Marsh has been attacked by Despot, calling himself the Off-White Knight. Off-White is the dreaded Stormbringer. Or Joystick. Okay. Instructions and Spacefire for menu. That's interesting. Okay. I think this joystick might be playing up. That's probably what the problem is. Right. Uh, pick up an object. Yeah, I think this joystick's playing up. We shall go to the keyboard. Okay, read the advert. Okay. Okay, so ups jump. Unfortunately, this speech video hasn't been used for a little while. So the um, pick up an object, execute command. You are now carrying a personal stereo. Okay. You can carry two. Up an object. Oh no, a disguise. Okay. Chicken here. Oh, okay. Only the things we've got in there. thinking we could do something with that. No. Lightning. I'm not sure how you you don't. Um, 
you know you can saw an action but anyway once again probably reading the instructions might be good <laughs> but as you can see they actually are using a sprite so it isn't straight spectrum convert and the others in the series did use sprites as well which is good it is just a little slow to control there's a little bit of hesitation there um, Okay, we seem to be going around in circles, but uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, we found a well. Oh, we'll jump up on that. There is nobody in this room. Okay. Nobody in this room. Okay, I thought we might have been able to do something with that, but more spooky for us. So I do have a few games to get through, so I'm not going to be able to play this for too long. Ooh, no. Can you talk to people? What's cast a spell? Milk granite, past plant, spell of wonder, travel to a person. jump in doors. It just looks like a door, right? So I should be able to go in it, maybe? Oh. Okay, I can't go any further to that side. I'm, what I might do, <coughs> I might, um, uh, you know, read the instructions and play this in my own time. But as you can see, it's um, it's in the Magic Knight series um, and uh, I, I'm, I really enjoyed the early games, but I honestly haven't played this one at all. Um, obviously, if you stay in one spot for too long, that cloud finds you and starts zapping you with uh, lightning. And we've died. So. <laughs> Alright, let's load up the next game and give it a try. Right, so here we go with MSX Artist. to screen clear screen backdrop repaint scroll mirror okay well, uh, F2 Press F1, it draws a line. Okay. And so it's got F2, draws a box. I take it we can change colours by going one zero. Oh, F3. In color, okay. moving the cursors even though it says in colour. Okay, that's a bit confusing. Oh, it's rotating the... Um, there we go. It's rotating the thing down the bottom, I take it. Yeah, so the one on the left, the green, is now our current one. Okay, well that sort of works. And now, how we go back? Filling F6. Oh, filing. Okay. Um, sprite mode. 
Oh, okay, that's just selecting the slider sprite mode, yeah. Draw pattern. Oh, okay, so this allows you to make a sprite. Sorry, the keys on my keyboard. A little bit spongy. Um, and you can rotate the pattern and everything like that. Okay. Um, oh. Three. Build sprite. Oh, I thought that's what we're doing. Okay. Oh, well, anyway. Um, there's a bit there. Uh, as I said, once again, it's a utility, so you need to sit down and play over it for a little bit and see what we can do. But um, let's move on to our next one. We can play some more games. <coughs> right, so here we go with A View to a Kill. Now, I do vaguely remember this one from back in the day. A key or oh, okay, uh, M to be sick, lose it. Um, so there's two different games Mines Game and City Hall. So we will load the Mines game. So uh, back in a minute, right? So here we go. I'm just going to use the keyboard. So it's a whoa. Okay, oh, that was a demo. Okay, maybe it's joystick only. Right, so here we go with uh, the second half of the game. Um, I've actually had quite a bit of issues with this. I've, I don't have the instructions with the game and I couldn't find a downloaded copy and it's taken me a while to figure the controls out. <coughs> um, so both games are very similar in the control. So I've got the second one loaded up. I'm just going to show you that one. And I'm going to move on to the next game because they are quite insane. Um, so yeah, you have to press escape to get back to here and you can do that in the game as well and exit. Fire button to start which is the space button. Uh, when it wants to. There we go. Alright. Now, you actually move left and right using the M and N keys. I mean, look, there's a perfectly good set of cursor keys on the keyboard. And up and down using A, Z. I suppose it is a spread formation. And you can see us on the map down the bottom is the blue square. Um, now, that's an object. So if we press space, we go into command mode. And then we press uh, the left and right keys to select the command we want to do search the number five now you can also change what you're going to do so we can go and pick up the number five it is an extremely clunky control screen so let's do it again search bucket of water pick up the bucket of water well, I didn't actually pick up the bottle of water. Oh, and we've gone down the stairs. Go across here, and then I know that we find... I've been, I've been doing some exploring. Okay, so here. Say search. Oh. So we can possibly only carry one object. That's what the problem is. Search. No. Pick up. Oh, there we go. No, I didn't drop the actual number five. So we can collect more than one. Now we have a closed door. Actually, I haven't hooked my headphones up, so I've got no. There is some music playing, so I was only guessing. And we've gone down another level now. I mean, look, it's got some things to it. It's just that the controls are so difficult to work with. And there we go, we've got a bullet. You can 
work it out once you can work it out but other than that safe so perhaps we have to put a yellow cupboard pick up use no so it's a bit of an adventure game where we've got to um, find and defuse bombs and things like that so Oh, I sort of know where they were going. Oh, it's just ruined by the controls. So I'm not going to bore you guys with it too much. You, you can see what the game's like and um, maybe um, have a go at a downloaded copy. All right, let's try the next game. So next we have James Bond 007, The Living Daylights. A nice pumping tune. Um, F2 joystick selected and fire play the game let's see if this joystick works oh, yeah. so obviously we are a spectrum conversion oops we need to not being shot at supposed to do those. I do believe we're dead already. Okay, if you press down you roll. Up. Paint gun. All for PVK. Okay. Paint gun. All for PVK. Yes, we've got that. Oh my goodness, why do these games always have such stupid controls? <laughs> and we are dead. Right. Up, down, left, right, fire. Fires at the cursor position. Okay, so they, they sort of are trying to follow the movie. If you press right, push right, so the cursor hits the side of the screen, and Bond will run in that direction until you release the button. Is there a cursor there somewhere? Tell me, please. Oh, there's the cursor. You move it left and right. Okay. Right. Why make Why make the controls so complicated? Okay, so you see we've got a cursor back again, but we can't move it up and down, which is most annoying. So it's going to be selecting weapons at the moment. And no matter what I move or select, I'm selecting weapons. I don't know what a paint gun's going to do for us. Maybe it's the joystick. Look, I'll give them, give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll swap out the joystick because that is a secondary one. And meanwhile, we've been shot to death. Definitely moving. Oh, I see. If I point back in the opposite direction, now we can move up. Right, I shot him. Yay! So 
that you can barely see the cursor. Okay. So if pressing forward goes forward, but if you press back, you go into gun mode. And there was obviously something wrong with that other joystick and it wasn't. I'm not sure I'm actually firing. Oh, got him. Well, maybe the collision detection is so bad. Ooh. Got a little bit of power flip there. Alright, so, it's a specky conversion. Might have been fun on the specky, maybe if you stuck with the instructions a bit, but, yeah. A bit unplayable, a little disappointing as far as the James Bond game. And it does have quite a few levels, so, you know, maybe... I'll have another go at some other stage. All right, let's try our next game. Right, so here we go with Terramix. <clears throat> uh, I can already see that we're going to have to use keys. So ZX. Okay. S to swap item. T to think. One and two, and space to jump. Oh my god. Okay, we can select characters. Oh, well, it's quite colourful. Where am I? I'm over there, okay. Okay. Okay, so I've got a vacuum player. Now what do I do? <laughs> Am I supposed to catch the um, bird with the vacuum cleaner, maybe? Ooh. Maybe not. Send the vacuum cleaner to somebody else and we'll keep going. Oh, and we're not allowed to be touched by that. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Take it that destroyed the earth, which is a bad thing. Well, look, control's not where you're standing. The T S S for what? The T thing space to jump. Okay. Um. I mean, the music's pretty full on. Oh, that's a bit stupid, wasn't it? So you can't leave the screen when you've got an item, so we can swap with somebody else. Not all standing, obviously. It is an obvious Spectrum port, but I have managed to get the attribute clash down, which MF76 machines don't have to suffer from. Is that a dark gun? Maybe. Or is it a char snake charming pipe? Yeah, I can go past snakes, I reckon. Is that a cricket ball or something? 
once again, probably should have read the instructions. But at least, you know, it's a Spectrum game where they've tried to, um, uh, you know, lull the amount of attribution, add a bit of colour. Um, well, once again, converted across the MSX, really should have used sprites for the moving objects instead of using background animation. But it seems to be running at a reasonable clip and there's um, reasonable sound. But, um, you know, as we get looking at so many games, I'll probably just have to have a bit of a, more of a go later. But there you go, there's Terramix, which I haven't heard of at all. I haven't played the Spectrum version either. Alright, let's try the next game. Right, so our mystery cartridge, and moved over to this side of the room because I have my new capture set up. Um, and also to explain, there's a bit of time passed between when the package arrived and when we're doing these gameplays. Um, the package arrived before Christmas, when I'm talking about some of the games um, were first, you know, um, showed to me the Christmas before. I wasn't joking, this one's been a long time coming. Um, but anyway, here's the first of our cartridge games, and, it, and I didn't have it. And it's called Super Snake. And it's got a little demo mode that doesn't look too bad. One player low, okay? By Hal Laboratory. Okay, so we've got to get the. Oh, minus. I don't think any of the ones with pistol marks are that good for me. Oh. Well, it's for a simple game, it's not a bad concept. It's fast. Whoops, run into the back. And any points left on the ground, you. Yeah. I don't know how many lives you get. Oh. Seems to be giving us a few goes. I assume I'm actually supposed to exit when you get enough. Oh, I see, we're running out of time. Oh, no, that went through. Well, there we go. And. Oh. There's probably something we have to do to get our score locked in, but um, not a bad little game for um, a miscellaneous one. Never seen up not hunt. I'll have to see if I can hunt down what the cover is like. I said I've never seen that one before. I definitely didn't have it. All right, that was a nice little surprise. Let's try our next game. So next we have Golf Game by ASCII Corp in 1983. It does look like a compiled basic game, so semi-compiled, put into a cartridge sort of one which is technically how my titles probably would have ended up in Japan had I been a slightly more astute business person at the age of uh, I think it was 15 or 16 one player input your name okay I'll press trigger hole one par four 320 meter okay Ooh. Play a goose. Okay, so we're fairly basic. Yeah, it, this looks like we are written in base. Club one wedge. Okay, and we move our aiming point around the outside. Can I? Yeah. Okay, for some reason I have to. Press right to do that. Okay, 
input shop here. Yeah, fair enough. Two. <laughs> Straight into the um. Yeah, so very much a um, one written in basic. But saying that it's not. Uh, no, we need our sandwich, I reckon, because we're in the sand. It takes the while to respond to the buttons as well. a bit mean. There we go. It's a matter of getting used to how far you can go with a particular one. means we're going to move it all the way yeah. Well, we do get a zoomed in. Okay, that's makes it a little better. to at least get a hole in before we go. Even though it's going to be a dreadful score. Yay! Oh, he took his eight shots. <laughs> so, hole two, par five, 460 metres. So, as far as golf game is concerned, it's not too bad for a very early game. Um, a little disappointing paying a cartridge price for something like this. Um, you know, really should have been, you know, released on a tape and that's a bit cheaper and things like that, but a nice oddity that I hadn't found a copy of before, so a very nice addition to the collection. Lots of golf games on the MSX. Let's try our next title. Right, so here we go, Hypersports 1 with the Hypersports controller. Now, my controller works, I'm just missing the sticker off the top, but that's fine. And it's, you can turn it around either way for left or right-handed people. And it's clicky. I warn you in advance. So let's see how we go. Ooh. Okay. So so what do we do? We jump. I have no idea what I'm doing, by the way. 7.6, 3.2, okay. I think I'm supposed to use the other button. I do believe we got the minimum score possible. We'll try that again. You definitely have to use the other button to spin as much as possible. Right, button, up. And 
and straight. We're getting better. <laughs> okay. No. Nope. <laughs> well, I somehow managed to get a higher score that time. I haven't quite got how we do the spring. Press on, we shall. Oh. Okay, we've got a bit of bounce. We just press the wrong button for the um, to go into the dive bit without spinning. Oh, no. You can talk. Seven, six, seven, seven, six point four. I do believe that's progress. Okay, 6.4. Surely it's not that hard to get Well, this is a better start than my normal. Got to get that take off right. Hmm. I need more spins. Oh, I am improving, I promise. One more time. Then I promise you we'll move on and I won't talk to you any longer. I've played the track and field ones a lot. Oh no. Those judges are mean. All right. Well, obviously, I need to practice these more and learn how to play them properly. Never was particularly good at the hypersports one um, in the arcade. I think I was only there for a very short time. It was track and field that I played more, and, and they're a lot simpler. It's a lot more bash, bash, bash and uh, occasional timing thing. Uh, these ones you need to know what you need to do for each of the particular things, um, and I'm quite obviously not very good. Alright, we've got one game to go. I've saved the MSX2 game for last, but let's have a look at that now. Alright, going into this game blind, I probably, I know I probably shouldn't, but um, here we go. I said I've never even watched a video on this one, um, but it looks pretty cool. Once again, we did not get the MSX2 title. It's down here in Australia. Okay, so even though it's European released, it does have some kanji in the text, but I'm sure we can work it out. So we're going on an adventure, driving up to some sort of cave. Oh, we've got a party.
Ooh, okay, we opened up. Ooh, let me shoot, okay, and jump. This one's again M62 game, so quite colourful. Okay, we can collect our thought more later. Oh, we can push that. Okay. okay. Graphics are really nice, you know. This is shows you, you know, some of the stuff that I quite literally missed out on. Oops! Oh, you can get caught underneath there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. So you take a character at a time. So this one's a little faster and does karate kips. Okay, so everything's where it was, so all the things I've collected have been collected. Hmm, I like his speed. It's a great little game. Oops. Oh dear. No, oh, we need to go down there anyway. Still interest. We can't go in there, can we? No. <laughs> I like the graphics. They're really... Whoops. Nice and colourful. People are probably screaming at me. We've, um, what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh. Not as I was expecting. Oh. Mm -mm. I think I'm running low on 
juice up a... Now if I come back in, ah, it resets the place, okay. That's it. Except I missed to actually collect the um, collectible thing and then I fell down. <laughs> Alright, well, this actually looks like a kind of a, a very good game that I'm going to get lots of fun out of. I need to sit down and have a, a good proper go at it. Um, to that end, it'll I mean, the last game is another reason is that it will stay in the machine so I can play it um, when I come in here in a few times. So, um, this pick up and play has taken a little while. The package arrived um, just before Christmas. Um, there were a few other things in front of it that I needed to make videos, and it just didn't get done before Christmas um, because it takes time to load all the games on tape and everything like that. As it is, we had a couple of ones that didn't load. Um, so, We've got about 90% of the way there though, so some very interesting titles, obviously some direct Spectrum ports, uh, but you've got to love the games that were written specifically for the MSX system by people who knew how to push the system, and we got an MSX2 game, which is fantastic. And I can't believe I've never played this game um, after all this time, so um, I'm definitely going to experience it for the first time and enjoy it. Alright, I'm Electric Adventures, thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.